and he knows what to do. <laughs> All right. I would have so, added the time, but I heard it's right. business casual. So, I figured. <laughs> so Rosie, today is your meeting. We are simply here to uh, potentially ask additional questions as, as um, Jared answer your question. So mm -hmm. I am going to turn the floor to you and you can run it however you want to run, run it. And then three of us will be interjecting additional questions or, or comments, things like that. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, so nice to meet you finally after talking on email. <laughs> Pleasure. Um, and I guess we'll start with what is your major to go with your financial planning minor? Um, pardon? Sorry. No worries. <laughs> what is your major that goes with your financial planning minor? I'm currently majoring in business administration. Okay, that's cool. And um, why did you decide to be a financial planning minor? Can, can uh, we back up a little bit, Jared? Remember, you did not start with the business administration. Tell us the story about where you started, how did you come across, how you come across this opportunities. And when you first started taking one class, you haven't even switched over to business major yet. So give us a little bit of background there. Absolutely. So I began my journey at Cal Lutheran as a computer science major, and that was really my focus coming in. Um, I, I learned reasonably quickly that that may not be the path for me. Um, however, I still took another semester of computer science classes, but I started to branch out and I actually took Professor Klepper's class. And from that, I learned about the um, FPA or CFP competition. And from that, I was able to meet with uh, Professor Chen and we actually worked on that project quite a bit together. And it really, really uh, spurred my love for financial planning. Along with all the knowledge I'd gained in Professor Klepper's class, I felt that I, that was a career I'd be interested in and it was something that I would like to pursue. So pretty quickly after that, I decided to take more financial planning classes, switch the minor, and uh, it did take me a bit to switch out of computer science, but I was taking business classes at the time. So more or less after that first semester of uh, financial planning classes, I kind of committed to the pathway and I, do not regret that decision at all and i'm very happy to be out of computer science and doing something i both enjoy and that interests me that's a good story <laughs> um okay so what are your plans after you graduate then uh all right well going forward i would like to start working ideally at a, a smaller financial planning for firm and learn about the profession more and more as i pursue my certification as a or my certified financial planner cfp mm -hmm. um and then after that i'm considering graduate school if i continue to continue down the path of financial planning even possibly considering a cfa as well um so yes i'm kind of committing to this career pretty heavily but it it's inter it interests me and I'm loving everything about it. So as of now, there's no, nothing else I'd rather be doing. So, so before, before we go to the next questions, mm -hmm. uh, Bill, could you, could you possibly give um, Jared some recommendation in terms of if he is committed to the financial planning industry, should he start with a smaller firm versus a larger firm? Because always there's always a training, a training aspect of that. So what's your, what's your practitioner's recommendation here? Think of this way. I wouldn't, you know, I don't think it matters smaller or larger. I think what you got to watch, you, you don't get it with a firm that's heavy, heavy sales out of the gate. Absolutely. So turn you whole, totally off on the financial planning field. So try to get, you know, certain firms are very good to work with. Certain firms, you just want to stay away from. They're there to basically, I hate to say, you know, chew you up and spit you out. So yeah. if you want to get in, you want, you know, you have to going to have to do some selling, you know, to make this a career, but you don't want it. It's so brutal right out of the gate. Um, most of the time, like work at a Schwab, work at a, I'm just thinking, can't even say TD Ameritrade, Ameritrade anymore. So they're the same work, company. <laughs> yeah. So work maybe at a, um, uh, at one of the financial planning firms. Uh, I know the student one, I think they do a lot of internship. So you may want to try that. And uh, try to avoid the heavy, heavy sales firms because they'll go through all, they'll turn all your family members against you. <laughs> so. I guess the other thing that I would add is that uh, usually with a good training, um, 
components to it typically are big company like Charles Schwab or TD Ameritrade, JP Morgan Chase, big, bigger firm that they have the financial advisor or financial planner program, development program. Those firms tend to give you a good training compared to um, the smaller firm or mid-sized firm when their training is not heavily, heavily invested. Uh, but, but Bill is right. If you, if you get into heavy, heavy sales in a certain type of product, especially product sales, yeah. and it tend to turn people off. So you have to be very, very careful of which type of firms that you go with. And the other thing that I would recommend is that as you pick whether or not big or small firm, always make sure that you have some sort of mentor because who you pair up Absolutely. with is going to make a huge difference in terms of what your career looks like. And uh, I feel like one of the main lessons I actually took away from Professor Klepper's class was the emphasis on where you end up at the beginning can have a huge impact on your career going forward, especially because of the varied amounts of sales included in this profession. Um, and actually in my experience in the FBA of Ventura County, a lot of the connections I've made I've been, have been with the smaller firms, of course, and that, that's sort of right. where I came from with my intention to possibly end up at one of those in the beginning is simply because of my existing connections with them. Mm -hmm. And we've, I've had many conversations with them about the differences between the sales-based firms and the um, non-sales-based non firms and kind of the differences in how they train their planners. So definitely everything I heard from Professor Klepper in my first financial planning class has been echoed by all the wonderful people I've met at the uh, FPA of Ventura County. So uh, incidentally, in case you haven't checked the email, there was a fee-only firm up in the Bay Area that they just contacted us that they do have opening. So check them out. <laughs> okay, I will. Check your I'll email. <laughs> all right, Rosie. Yeah. Okay, um, so kind of jumping off that question, where do you see yourself in the next three to five years? Um, so in the next three to five years, I'm hoping to, as far as location-wise, still be somewhere around Southern California to, to Central Coast California, where I've uh, spent the majority of my life and I love it here. Um, so location-wise, that's where. Career-wise, uh, I do hope to, within the next three to five years, have achieved my CFP if I'm feeling ambitious and uh, keep it on track with all my work. And hopefully at that point, I've landed a, a reasonably, uh, a, a job I hope to stay in for at least a while or something with upward mobility. Um, other than that, uh, I kind of like to leave my plan, my general life plans pretty open because I feel that if I get too set on, too set on all the specifics, uh, I'm really limiting myself and my possibilities. Mm. Okay. Um, so, why, why do you want to go into the financial planning field and have the goals that you have? Um, so what really drives me in the financial planning field is the interactions with pe not only with people, but it's a job with a reasonable amount of flexibility as far as your daily schedule. You don't necessarily spend all of your time in an office and nor do you need to, uh, nor do you need to spend all your time in an office. You get to, and the personal aspect of it, I, I really do enjoy. I do enjoy talking to people making connections. And I, I find that it's a, it's a good way to help people in their lives and you can really reduce their stress if you're doing your job right. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what value are you receiving from being a CLU financial planning minor? Well, all of the courses directed towards financial planning are super, not only super interesting to myself, but uh, they're very applicable. And I found that more than any other courses I've taken in the business major, um, financial planning really bleeds into every other sort of topic I've, I've dealt with. It's been really heavily used in um, all the accounting classes I've taken so far. Business math is, was really heavy on time value of money calculations and going into it, knowing to what time value of money is and knowing all the general mathematics behind it has really made my, my time at CLU easier. It's, it's been a very good general education as well. And not only that, even if I was, were to not become a financial planning, planning uh, professional, this information would be extremely valuable down the line because I would understand not only how to manage my own finances, but also how to effectively communicate with those who would manage them if I chose that route as well. Mm -hmm.
That's great. Um, okay, so would you recommend this minor to other students? Well, of course I would. Um, <laughs> I personally enjoy it, and I know that maybe it's not for everybody, but I found that I was someone who enjoyed math a lot when I was younger, when I was a child, but as I went through high school math, it became less and less enjoyable and felt more forced, but financial planning math is really not too intense. It's more formula-based, and I think that that alone, for people who don't like math, makes it a valuable, makes it a feasible minor option. And the people in it are great. All the professors I've had are wonderful. I, I can say every professor I've had has topped any professor I had in computer science, not to, uh, you know, make the computer science department seem any less great. Uh, they were amazing. Are you saying we're a fun people to work with? <laughs> well, of course. I mean, I've had nothing but good times with all of you guys. And I know Professor Klepper, especially, uh, taking his class got me really into it. All the fun, fun enjoyable stories. And uh, he, he portrays the information in a very approachable way. Professor Soleil, he is an awesome professor. I've had nothing but, nothing but great classes with him, and I'm super excited to have more next semester. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, every, and uh, computer yeah. science people, too, are socially un unacceptable. So they're, they're <laughs> awesome. uh, financial okay, planners are to, much more fun. Not to degrade the major, but that's why I had to come to financial <laughs> planning. Is I just I couldn't have conversations with so many of them, or you know I couldn't stand the the look of having not showered in weeks, possibly, or the uh, flip flops and jeans that were running pretty common among quite the quite a few of them. But I mean, I also spent a lot of time in a pool and couldn't handle the. Uh, paleness of the majority of my classmates. <laughs> <laughs> so just to make you no, I'm just kidding. So HR, just to uh, make you feel better, uh, I got my uh, bachelor in computer engineering, so I totally understand what you're saying. And it was after a couple of years working as a, you know, application developer and, you know, working as a computer programmer, I thought maybe, okay, that's set for me. I need some more interaction with people and like my yeah. so. I switched from computer uh, engineering to finance and financial planning too. So mm -hmm. I totally understand what you're well, saying. I, I'm glad you know I'm not alone in those uh, those opinions. And yeah, it was one of those things where I, I still appreciate them as people, and I think that they definitely have their niche and their their best their good qualities. But they didn't necessarily align with what I wanted a in a career and b on a work life kind of in a work life kind of scenario. Mm -hmm. And and keep in mind that the probably the best um, planners out there typically came from background of engineering, pilots, um, and even, even scientists, because uh, as you mentioned that they are routines, algorithm programming you have to follow on, on the computer side, computer side. But on the planning side, there's also a whole bunch of rule, except that you deal with people. So it's a lot yeah. easier in terms of uh, flexibilities and working with people. So, so some of uh, some of the best students of mine are not coming in from your traditional business majors, and I too didn't come from financial planning at all. I was a career changer. So I'm glad that you made uh, made the move. <laughs> it's been nothing but wonderful for me. So I can say I'm I'm very happy to be where I am. Very lucky to have, especially come into. Professor Klepper's class. Otherwise, I don't know if I would have ever, uh, ever found financial planning. Okay, that's great. So what advice then would you give to current students who are thinking of doing the financial planning minor? Uh, come again? Um, what, what advice would you give to current students who are thinking about also doing the minor? Uh, well, I, I would say take the intro class. I believe it's uh, the University 102 designation, I believe. Um, I personally haven't taken it, but I've looked at some of the stuff from it and it looks awesome. And I think mm -hmm. it's one of those things that you might not know if you love it until you try it. Or if you think you like it, you might not, I don't know. Um, I, I was lucky, I came in, I found my spot and I, I didn't do that in, in a uh, lower division class either. I think I came into uh, what was pr principles of personal financial planning, so. I kind of took it seeing as, uh, hey, this will be helpful for me in the end. And I figure for students thinking about it, the worst thing they can do is try it because regardless, they'll get good information for their financial future. Mm 
Mm. So, so Bill, a uh, quick question would be, so Jared mentioned about there are two sets of courses. One is the more of an introduction of personal finance, as that's the 102 class. Mm -hmm. And then there is a your uh, financial planning introduction plus risk management class. Mm -hmm. So for students who wasn't quite sure what to do, uh, what would you kind of compare one compared to the other? Can, can you give students a little bit of idea of what's the difference of these two courses? Well, the biggest difference, I mean, the 102 is just one credit. So you seem to get bigger classes. So the nice part, because a lot of people just need that one credit, but it's a nice way to get that hook in where you start seeing, and you can tell which ones you spark that interest in, that, hey, this may be something I want to do. So you talk about the, a little bit of the career path in that course. So I think the one credit course is, is bigger. The other students more take it because they, uh, both students take it because they want to per, uh, personally get better. Um, but it's just a little more in depth on the, um, on the other, um, on the, um, the 396. So some of the students are already on the track. They start thinking about, hey, I want to be financial planners. The ones that are taking one credit have no idea. And then all of a sudden you're sparking the interest. So the 396 course, they're just a little bit along the way starting to think about their career. So actually the, the 102 is a nicer case because you can get them, they, got, they have no idea what they want to do. So you can start right. giving them a little bit of direction. Right, thank you. Okay, so how would you summarize your experience so far in the financial planning? Well, I've had nothing but wonderful professors and nothing but great experiences. I mean, I came into it uh, not necessarily the most involved student in general. I've spent my, the majority of my time through all of my other schooling spending uh, hours a day at, at a pool doing two sports. And I never really was involved in clubs or anything other than that. Um, mm -hmm. and I, it, they drew me in. Um, the minor drew me in. All the topics, all the... Uh, all the knowledge has really, really pushed me forward and to the point where I'm actually now the president of the Student Financial Planning Club. And I, I mean, I never expected this level of engagement from myself, um, given my past and my, my general, general level of engagement with uh, school. So it's one of those things where it caught me by surprise and the fact that I enjoy it so much kept me going. Would you, Jared, would you mind to talk a little bit about the student club? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, of course. So right now we're running about, I believe, 12 members, give or take. I know some of them are graduate, graduating this semester and some people have not been added yet because of, well, the coronavirus has really slowed meetings, <laughs> sadly. But what we're focusing on doing is bringing in outside speakers to engage our Cal Lutheran community in financial planning, both providing um, knowledge for personal financial planning for people who aren't necessarily looking to be financial planners as a career, as well as providing more niche um, information and speakers that focus on, say, um, certain aspects of estate planning or client communication that are really geared more towards our, our financial planning minor students and or people who are thinking about doing that as a possible other career despite their, despite the fact that they're not in the minor. Okay, that's cool. And can you talk more about what your position is as the president, what your role is and what it involves? Um, so at the moment, my role is quite broad. I was more or less handed the position after being in the club for a semester as a treasurer. Mm -hmm. um, and I've kind of taken taken some liberties with it and given that we kind of have graduated the majority of the officer class from when I came in I'm starting to take on a lot of the responsibilities just to show certain members who are learning certain officer members that are learning rather um, I'm working partially with their responsibilities and partially um, teaching them their responsibilities so as to be able to if you will uh, hand them off more work in the end Mm -hmm. So I kind of deal with the majority of things, whether it's uh, just generally processing uh, emails, recruiting new members, uh, reaching out to speakers. I attend the FPA of Ventura County quarterly educational meetings, and I sit on their uh, board of directors as a student consultant, if you will, uh, working on engaging younger generations in for the financial planning pathway. Mm -hmm. 
And other than that, it's mostly just uh, communication with, again, outside individuals, individuals within the club, and starting to work on speakers. Sadly, right before our first, spe first event uh, with Northwestern Mutual this year, we did, of course, uh, move online. Mm -hmm. So as of right now, to be honest, my job's stagnated a little bit. As the president, I haven't had quite as much to do or been quite as active with it because of our inability to meet in person or in, and inability to have uh, in-person presentations. I am working with some local professionals to possibly get a webinar or two here for our members, but I'm also trying to make sure, of course, that we have the uh, guaranteed, guaranteed attendance of at least a few, few members. That way I don't uh, ask someone to come speak and then present them an empty audience. That sounds great and really interesting for the members too to actually hear someone speak about the different professions and all the experiences they have. Okay, so you also mentioned that you were part of the FBA VC experience at VC. Can you talk about that experience and what that was like? Yeah, so I've so far been to two quarterly educational meetings where they have, uh, they bring in two speakers at each. Um, I've learned about both digital security, um, multiple types of investment strategies and client communication specifically relating to the death of loved ones or the, even the death of a client and communicating with um, either the remaining uh, surviving spouse and or the surviving family members about how to handle all that and how to do it with a effective yet very human, very emotionally attached um, persona and go forward respectfully and uh, yet without, uh, without neglecting the business end of things that so often can happen and really delays the process. Mm -hmm. uh, so personally, I've taken quite a lot from, from their educational talks, but I've also learned quite a lot from, from the members. It's been a great networking experience. Um, there's been at least 40 to 50 people I've spoken to um, who are all in the financial planning field. So just alone on networking, it's been an awesome experience. I also sit on their board of directors, so I attend board meetings after these uh, quarterly educational meetings, as well as uh, monthly communications regarding actions that the organization needs to take. Mm -hmm. And I, I've learned a lot from them, not only on a networking side of things, but in a general career sense, because of the information that they provide and the way they conduct themselves as well, being that this is such a um, communication and networking heavy profession, I found that those tips alone, if nothing else, make the three hours every quarter that I spend with them, um, not to mention the time spent communicating online, is extremely worth it. And I'm hoping that once, uh, once we begin meetings again in person, I can uh, get a good amount of the club members to come and attend. It's always an awesome time. And, you know, you get breakfast fed to us. And uh, if you're you sit on the board, you get lunch too, and I can't complain. Free food is free food, and it's always good. Well, so, so um, Jared and Rosie, mm -hmm. one thing that um, Jared have mentioned repeatedly is that this, um, like any major, any minor, uh, Jared took the initiative to learn more mm -hmm. beyond the classroom. And so because of that, he learned leadership, right? because he now is the president of the student club. And because of that, then he learned how to do networking with practitioners. And on top of it, he also learned how to do communications. So what Jared have done now is not just earning a degree with a minor, he also effectively learned how to be with people, how to network, and like it or not, Jared is already been learning how to do proper sales. And this, these are the very crucial skills that anyone in any major that need to have uh, because of her, his initiative of doing all that, he is the one actually gonna be benefiting the most. In addition to that, by the time that he gets to interview, uh, just the amount of practitioners that he had already interact with, he's not gonna get very nervous. He can present himself very, very well. Uh, and plus, because of the leadership skill that he had both in the student club, as well as the um, uh, association in Ventura County, that's gonna give him that edge that he just going to stand out uh, much more obvious compared to all the other graduates. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, actually, if I may add something, if nothing else, this experience has taught me that they're not necessarily business owners at heart. They're, they're still individuals and you can't overlook that when you're interviewing with them. They're very human, very fun, very enjoyable people to be around and they have a lot of life to them. They're, and they really, uh, really enjoy to see someone with a, a younger person with ambition in the field because of the, uh, the career itself is also a pretty high transfer in rate from other careers, I've, at least from the information I've been given. So seeing a young person interested in and a young person trying to get other people interested they they really they've really helped me a lot and they've reached out and continued to support me or either uh, either through offering to speak for the club or with offering i mean really anything i could ask for they're they're trying to help me out with just in order to to grow the profession because that's that's what they really want to experience is a a new generation coming in and they want to they want to be a part of it they want to leave their mark on the next generation of financial planners dr chen Yes. Do we want to mention about, you know, that there is such a gap in the amount of young people coming into the field and how many at the tail end, let's just say 50, 60 and above years of age are retiring. So there's going to really be a great employment opportunity right. for people entering the financial planning field. You're going to have, I think it's, what is it? And correct me if I'm wrong, is it 50%? Yeah, oh, 50 we, or 60. Yeah, yeah it is much higher. Yeah, it's yeah. much higher. I, I think it's above 50 percent that are older than 60 years old, I guess. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. It, yeah. The vast Not us, but other people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's it's uh, the growth of the profession is is substantial. Uh, it's not just this this industry, but it's just a need. For, for general Americans to get advice, that has been, keep in mind the financial planning, uh, CFP has been around about 30 years. So if you compare to CPA, which is about 150 years or so, we are lag behind in terms of a profession. Therefore, 30 years, even though it sounds very long, but as a profession, we've just begun to take off and therefore, the demand is really, really high. And if you've gone through the minors and gone through all the activities that Jared is doing, you're just going to be quite successful um, in any firm that you're gonna be with. And potentially, if you're interested to even have your own firm at some point. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so kind of going off of that, how did you get the experience how did you get the opportunity to have this experience? Um, specifically relating to the FPA of Ventura County, um, mm -hmm. I had the option to attend this partially due to um, Jolly's interactions with him prior and the fact that I had recently overtaken the presidency of the student club. Um, I was actually, she invited me to attend um, one quarterly educational meeting in Santa Barbara. So I, I, made, I made the effort to get up at 4.30 and take the train, the first train of the day down there because I, at the time, didn't have a, a car. So made it there, walked to the, uh, the venue, and I got to meet all the, the wonderful people. And, and I got to say, despite how cold it was that morning, it was totally worth it. Um, I had a great time. And I can't wait to keep going. It was great. Okay, is there anything you can think of about the experience and about your financial mind, financial planning minor that you'd like to add and talk about? Um, I mean, personally, the only thing I can really add is that I hope more people, uh, hope more people try it out at least. Um, and hopefully from that we get, we get more members in the minor because the one thing I would like to see is more people enjoying the, the content as much as I do. We have fabulous professor, you know, Professor Absolutely. and Professor Salahi. There are wonderful professors to, to learn from. And then the next couple of questions are about your time at CLU and as a student at CLU. Right. So I was wondering um, what has been your favorite part about CLU so far? Uh, I gotta say, my favorite part has been in general, apart from the sorry notification the people I've met and it, the people I've met of course are, are awesome but the really the professors and a lot of the 
peripheral experiences offered by the university, especially the ones career related. Um, if, if you're looking for information relating to either career advancement or even something as simple as how to land an entry level position, all those resources are out there and offered regularly through um, in-person meetings and now webinars. And if you want it, it's there. And I really appreciate that about CLU is the fact that all of the resources they've actually established and they're actually supplying, it's not something, and they do it in person through presentations as well. They offer easy workshops. It's not something that's just a PDF on the, the school's website. And I, I really do appreciate that extra effort that the school itself takes to, uh, to promote those things and to offer them to the students. Um, so what is one thing that is interesting about you and CLE? Um, are you speaking one thing interesting about myself in regards to CLU or, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, about your college experience okay. related to. Uh, well, I would have to say, um, opposed to the, a good amount of the people I've met, and uh, even my closer friends, I, I think I have taken a greater level of initiative to attend a lot of career building or profession building experiences, things for me that will help me in my professional career either advance in it quicker and or entry into the, my profession sooner. Um, so I would say that's one thing that is more interesting about me in regards to CLU because I, I don't necessarily play a sport or do anything separate from school other than, uh, I mean, general hobbies. Um, who influences you the most at CLU and why? Well, I would have to say Honestly, the three professors in this webinar have probably had the greatest, uh, greatest influence on me as far as CLU goes. Um, not only are the one, they the ones I've spent in general a good amount of my, my educational time with, but I've also spent a good amount of time with them as well, just working through additional, um, additional things, especially uh, Dr. Chen and the CFP competition. Um, it, there, it's one of those things where I wouldn't necessarily undertake all these extra um, I, I suppose they would be ventures, um, extra ventures, if I didn't find the people so enjoyable. And I, I not only learned from them uh, career-related information, but I've learned a lot about how to hold yourself as a person or how to be a, a respectable plan or respectable individual. And I think that's something that a, a lot of universities may have, but I think Kowloon might do it better, especially the financial planning minor. <laughs> Um, so you touched on earlier that you have some hobbies. Do you have any that you want to share or any talents? Um, well, most of my talents I left in high school. <laughs> I spend most of my time outside of school, either uh, playing games with friends or outside, working out, being active. Uh, nothing, nothing too unique about my, hob my hobbies or passions, but I still enjoy them and I find that's what matters most. I agree. Um, so if you could do one thing differently as a student, what would it be? Um, I would say, well, first of all, I would, would have come into Kowloon as a financial planning, my, focusing <laughs> on business and financial planning. Um, other than that, I'm sure there's definitely been a lot of times where I've prioritized certain aspects of my life over school. And while I don't regret that necessarily, I do think I would approach that differently. Um, I definitely have skills that I've built over the years that I wish I could have developed earlier. Um, other than that, you know, I don't really have a whole lot of regrets, if you will. Um, so I kind of just, you know, got to live life as I've lived it and what's in the past is in the past. So just move forward and try and make those changes now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and those are all the questions I have. I don't know if there's anything you would like to add or if anyone uh, else. Bill and Hosan, do you have anything else that you want to add? Or well, Jared? Yeah, actually, I wanted to talk about the sales uh, aspect of this, um, you know, profession as a financial planner. I understand that it's a little bit tricky and because of the general, you know, public idea about, you know, salespeople, it's, it, may get, uh, it may get a little bit, you know, um, a little bit tricky how, to, how you want to actually deal with this aspect. But honestly, if you think about this in in any other career, you know, in any other, like, um, I don't know, 
employment path, if you want to say that, um, you are setting yourself. I mean, having this ability to sell your skill, experience, your knowledge to other people and kind of help them to understand how you can, I mean, uh, help them to meet their goals. I mean, it could be financial goals, it could be, uh, you know, career goals, it could be, you know, different things. I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's, it's a good, uh, it's a good it's a skill to have. And, uh, this, and yeah, exactly. And, and this, I think, and uh, being able to communicate with uh, different people from different backgrounds, cultures, values, it's a great, uh, it's a great uh, skill to have. And I think it's a good opportunity to learn this when you are still young in college and, um, you know, other people and maybe your employer, uh, you know, like, do not expect you to have all of these uh, skills right away, you know, at the beginning. But if you develop these things during your college and uh, college life, um, definitely you will have much better and much promising career path ahead of you, you know, compared to your counterparts and, you know, compared to other uh, graduates. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I find that the earlier you develop the skill, the more time you have to practice it and perfect it. So why not get started early? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bill, do you want something? Do you have something to add? Uh, just say, you know, if we could say that, you know, Kalu is well recognized in the financial planning industry and that this is a very easy career path for students that a lot of them just don't know it's here on the campus. So the more we get the word out, you know, the larger the classrooms will be. And it'll be a nice career, career path. Yeah. That's it for so, me. Well, Rosie, thank you so much. Um, do you have any additional questions for Jared? I can't think very at the moment. I think we covered a lot. I learned a lot. And okay. a great minor. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rosie. Thanks for doing this. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Bye, guys. Bye. And Rosie, I'll see you in a few minutes for the next interview. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Talk to you guys Thank soon. You. Take care. Right. Thank you, Jared. Have a good rest of your day. Stay healthy. Bye. Yeah. I will. Thank you.